In today's lesson, we're going to focus on sort of like a case study and it will be boiling in electrolysis and it'll be an example of a physical and a chemical change. So this will be like a case study in a physical and chemical changes. So electrolysis and boiling of water. So an example of the differences between chemical and physical changes can be seen with boiling and electrolysis of water. We've all seen boiling of water and hopefully by now you've all seen the electrolysis of water. But if you haven't, that's okay. You will still learn something from today. It's an example of what the differences are between a chemical and a physical change. So both processes affect the water, so that's a similarity. So we're looking at the similarities and differences between the processes now. First similarity is they both affect the water in some way. They both result in the production of a one or more gas, and they both require energy input. Obviously you have to turn on your stove to boil water or put it in the kettle or something. And you also have to pump in electricity to make it electrolysized. Okay, so we need energy. Now the differences include electrolysis utilizes electrical energy while boiling needs heat. You could use electricity, but that would just generate heat anyway. That's the, the diff one of the major differences. Now boiling water. The process of boiling water changes the state of water from liquid to a gas. Since we've been primary school, we've known that boiling turns water into gas. That's pretty self-explanatory. While a gas is produced, it doesn't mean that the chemical change is happening. Remember in the last lesson we looked at it's not just the evolution of a gas, it's the evolution of a gas with different properties to what we started with. So that's the difference here. Now the steam has the same chemical properties as the liquid water, so it's not a chemical change. And it's easily reversed. I can easily turn steam back into water if I put it, if I let the steam hit a cold surface plate or something. So I can condense it really easily. Now electrolysis of water on the other hand, electrolysis uses electricity to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, like gas. And that, this is definitely a chemical change. Now two gases are produced, and it's clear that these gases have different chemical properties compared to water. Really obvious, and you'll see why in a sec. Now obviously if I try to light hydrogen on fire, I can do that very easily. That's one chemical property, it ignites very quickly. Now if I try to light water on fire, that kind of just spits in the face of firefighting theory since the Middle Ages. Water has generally always put out fire, even Pokemon tells you that. You can see that water doesn't combust. So obviously the gas that we've produced has very different properties to the substance that we started with. That's a clear example. The hydrogen gas is very light. It will tend to go upwards, whereas the steam may not go up as far as high. And oxygen obviously has different properties to water as well. So that concludes today's lesson on this case study, so to speak, on electrolysis and boiling of water and an example of chemical and physical changes. So we're going to look at questions now and hopefully it will teach you something more about electrolysis and boiling of water that you may or may not have known already.